This presentation is about neovascularization glaucoma. It is a secondary disease, which is the result of an underlying primary disorder. This primary disorder is often a diabetic retinopathy or a venous or arterial occlusion of vessels supplying the eye. It can also be due to an inflammation of the temporal artery or the iris, trauma to the eye, irradiation, tumors, surgery, uveitis, or retinopathy, and prematurely born babies. Due to those primary conditions, the eye does not receive enough nutrients and oxygen. Due to those primary conditions, the eye does not receive enough nutrients and oxygen. As a response to this undersupply, the retina secretes vascular endothelial growth factor, short VEGF, and interleukin-6. They are messenger substances, which lead to the formation, migration and proliferation of endothelial cells and formation of new blood vessels. These new blood vessels can be located in the posterior area of the eye or in the anterior chamber of the eye. As these vessels are newly formed, they often do not have tight junctions and are more prone to ruptures, leading to hematomas in the eye. In the anterior chamber of the eye, the new blood vessels can lead to an impairment of the drainage of the aqueous humor which can rapidly lead to a significant increase in intraocular pressure. Additionally, a fibrovascular membrane can be formed, which decreases the drainage even more. Important here is the rapid and effective treatment. If treatment is not provided, permanent pain and progressive blindness can make it necessary to even remove the bulbus. Therapy is at first symptomatic which is the same for other types of glaucoma also. This is usually done by eye drops, which decrease the intraocular pressure. Other attempts to alleviate symptoms and prevent blindness are panretinal laser coagulation and retinal cryocoagulation. These procedures have the goal to reduce oxygen demand to the eye and so reduce the secretion of vascular endothelial growth factor and interleukin-6. If the intraocular pressure is not reduced by eye drops, also other medications can be given orally. Also surgery is possible to reduce the pressure, but in neovascular glaucoma, the prognosis of this surgery is worse than in other types, due to the blood vessels in the field of operation. Another possibility is to destroy the aqueous humor production site partially to decrease the production and so decrease the pressure. Of course, also the treatment of the underlying condition is essential, which will also lead to improvement of the condition. The disease generally progresses in four stages, which are prerubiosis, rubiosis, open angle glaucoma, and angle closure glaucoma. In the first stage, the pre stage, we cannot yet observe neovascularization. The second stage is characterized by the initial appearance of small vessels in the area of the iris. In this stage, there is no elevation of the intraocular pressure. In the next stage, the open angle glaucoma stage, the neovascularization will involve further parts of the eye. In the last stage, the vessels will invade even larger areas and a fibrovascular membrane is formed, which leads to the placement of the iris, resulting in a closure of the angle. That's all for this topic. Thank you for watching.